Okay, so can you figure out and solve this division problem? Well, I think a lot of people are going to have a tough time solving this problem because they're going to be a little bit confused by it. But I think if you stick with it, uh, most of you should be able to solve this problem. Let me go to tell you what it is here. We have 17 divided by 2x, and the answer is 5 remainder 2. And the question here is, what is x equal to? All right, so that is the problem. If you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second, then I'm going to show you two ways that you could solve this problem. Okay, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so before I show you the answer here, this question, if I made the um, uh, numbers uh, more complex, in other words, maybe I made this like a three-digit number, uh, this problem could be uh, pretty challenging, okay? But here, I made the numbers very reasonable where everyone should be able to figure this out through kind of common sense and trial and error. So I'm gonna be using algebra to solve this problem, but I'm also going to be kind of showing you a way that you can figure this out using trial and error. So if you're intimidated by this X, hopefully you're not, you will need to know some basic algebra to solve this problem. But again, I'm gonna show you two ways that we can do so, but let's go to take a look at the answer. So what is X equal to? X is equal to three halves. All right, now, if you figure this out, that is fantastic. We have to celebrate by giving a nice little happy face in A+, plus, a 100%, and multiple stars, so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you have a solid knowledge of division and algebra, okay? Because we're gonna need to know how division works, and we're gonna have to kind of do a review of something called the division algorithm, all that good stuff we did way back in elementary school. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. So hopefully you remember how to divide numbers. And if you don't, we're going to review this. So before we even consider the problem, let's just review how to divide numbers. And let's uh, use an example like this. So uh, 17 divided by two. Now, remember, we're not going to be using a calculator. Well, it's a terrible calculator. A calculator. We're not going to be using our calculator. We're going to be using what we learned way back in primary school or elementary school. So we're going to be talking about basic division. And what we learn in some form is something called the division algorithm. Now, your teacher wasn't saying, hey, we're going to be studying the division algorithm, but effectively they're going to be uh, teaching you how we can divide numbers. And this is, of course, a huge um, topic in basic mathematics. But before you know, before you can learn how to divide, you got to know how to multiply. But let's see if you can remember how to divide uh, 17 uh, divided by 2. And of course, all you want to use is a piece of paper and pencil. All right, so let's go ahead and go uh, back uh, many years for most of us and figure this out. So if you recall, basically what you're going to be doing is like, all right, well, here we have two. Can two go into one? And I'm, of course, I'm very um, informally describing this process, but hopefully this will bring back uh, most of your memory and be like, oh, yes, I remember how to do this. So you have two, and you're like, well, can two go into one? No, two cannot go into one. So you're going to have to consider the entire number. Can two go into 17? The answer is yes. Well, how many times? Well, we could fit eight twos inside of 17. So it's just, of course, trial and error. We could fit more than seven because seven times two is 14. And eight times two, of course, is 16. So we can fit eight twos, not nine twos, because nine times two, of course, is 18. So uh, 17 divided by two, well, we can fit eight twos in there. But what do we do next? Well, the process Again, this is the division algorithm. We have to take this eight and multiply it by two, which of course is 16. And then we're going to subtract 16 from 17 and we have one left over. Then we're gonna ask ourselves, well, can two go into one? No, two cannot go into one. So we have a remainder. We have something remaining that's left over. So the answer is the following. Okay, so 17 divided by two is eight, remainder equal one. 
All right. So more or less, um, you know, uh, all of us pretty much, you know, did this way back in elementary school, primary school. But there's another way we can think of the remainder. We can write the remainder as a mixed number fraction. So we can make this as a numerator as 1 over this number. So that would be 1 over 2. So 17 divided by 2 is the same thing as 8 and 1 half. Now, 8 and 1 half, this mixed number, okay, we can express as a actual uh, fraction. So that would be what? Seven, oh, 2 times 8 is 16 plus 1. Okay, 16 plus 1 is 17 over 2. And that effectively is our problem, right? 17 uh, divided by 2 is the fraction 17 divided by 2. Okay, so hopefully this brings back all your wonderful memories of elementary and primary school. And you're like, oh, yes, indeed. I remember how, I remember how to divide. Because if we don't remember how to divide using the division algorithm, then, you know, we can't really figure this problem out. Okay, so let's go back to our problem here. And now we're saying, all right, well, here is the answer. So we're trying to kind of think, what number was uh, did we divide 17 by in order for the answer to have 5 remainder 2, in order to be 5 remainder 2? So you can kind of, uh, you know, do this by trial and error, right? You'd be like, well, let's just kind of think here for a second. Well, if the answer was 1, 5 times 1 I would have a 5 here. Well, no, that's definitely, I could do better than that in terms of this division problem. Uh, how about 2? Well, if it was 5, uh, if, this was the, if this was 2, okay, if we we're taking 17 divided by 2, would this be the answer? Well, 5 times 2 is 10, and we would have 7, and of course, 2 can go into 7, so that's not right. And of course, we kind of just play around with this, mentally speaking, and we're like, oh, how about 3? Well, 5 times 3 is 15, and then we could subtract uh, 15 from 17. We end up with 2. 3 can't go into 2, so indeed, uh, the answer is 15. In other words, this right here, okay, uh, this 2x must be equal to 3 in order for the answer for uh, to be 5 remainder 2. Okay, so 2x, in fact, again, is equal to 3. So we could just set up a basic algebraic equation. 2x is equal to 3 and solve for x by dividing both sides of the equation here by 2. So x is equal to 3 halves. All right, now hopefully this is the approach that 99% of you took. And you were able to take this approach because these numbers are pretty easy. In other words, we kind of just figure this out that the answer for this answer to be 5 remainder 2, okay, from some number, or 17 being divided by some number, and this was the answer, we could figure this out uh, kind of through trial and error. But if I made the numbers much more complex, well, it wouldn't be so easy. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you another way where we can use more algebra to solve this problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. But before we do, I'm going to ask you to consider subscribing and supporting this channel. My objective is to reach as many people as possible that are interested in math, but uh, uh, more particularly, those people that really need help in mathematics because just not maybe getting the math instruction uh, they need in school. Okay, so I am trying to prevent people that look like this. I'm bad at math. I hate math. Well, uh, typically people don't like math or, uh, you know, or feel like they're not good at math just because they're just not getting the right instruction. And I'm also going to tell you as well, if you happen to be a student or if you're just trying to learn math and you feel that you are just not naturally good at math, that's not the case. Okay, so don't give up and there are no shortcuts, but what you need is great instruction. So hopefully uh, if you don't have a math teacher of your own, I would like to be your math teacher. And when you subscribe, I actually think of that as... Um, or, you know, for me personally, I feel like I've gained a new student. And if you're going to subscribe, you might as well hit that notification bell as well. Okay, so let's get back to this prom. And we're going to do this prom a different way. Okay. Now, we needed to review uh, the basic division here, the division algorithm, because this can be a little bit confusing, especially if you didn't kind of review how to do division like this with just numbers. So here is the problem. We have 17 divided by 2x. The answer is 5 remainder is equal to 2. Well, I can uh, write this differently. 17 divided by 2x. Algebraically, I can write it this way. 17 divided by 2x as a fraction. All right, so this is this. And the answer is 5. Okay, the answer here is 5 remainder 2. Now, remember, when we have like 3 divided by, let me write this here real quick. 
uh, 3 divided by 7, okay, so that's going to be 2, times 3, of course, is 6, that's 1, that's the remainder of 1, but we have 1, 2, and 1 third. So whatever this number is here, that we're divided by, that becomes the denominator, and the remainder becomes the numerator. So in this case here, I can write my answer as 5, okay, this is the denominator, because okay, so we're basically going to write a mixed number fraction, and the remainder, okay, is the numerator. So we're just kind of following this pattern. So make sure you understand what I just did here, and you can, uh, you know, if you're confused, just do a simple example like this, right? So 7 divided by 3 is 2. So, of course, we do this math. So we have 1 as our remainder, but we're going to write this as a mixed number fraction, 1 over 3. Again, this right here becomes the denominator, and our remainder is the numerator. So our remainder is 2. That's the numerator, and then what we're dividing by uh, is the denominator. So we have five, um, 5, the mixed number fraction, 5 and 2. 2 over 2x. Now here, I can simplify this fraction right here. Uh, these twos cross cancel, so really this is 5 over 1x. Okay, so again, you're going to need to be uh, up to speed on your algebra skills to figure out what I'm doing, but uh, if you understand that, let's go ahead and take the next step. All right, so we have 17 divided by 2x. Of course, this is our problem. We're just expressing this as a fraction like this, and that's equal to 5 and 1 over x. Now, of course, I just explained to you why this is the case. So now, let's go ahead and solve for x or figure out what x is equal to. Now, remember, when you have a mixed to number fraction like 5 and 1 third, I could turn it into an improper fraction by taking this 3 and multiplying it by 5, so that's 15 plus 1. So this would be 15 plus 1 over 3. Now, I want to do the same thing, but we're going to uh, be using this x here. So x times 5 is 5x plus 1 over x. Okay, so I'm doing the same thing here. I'm converting a mixed number fraction into an improper fraction. So x times 5x plus 1 over x. Same thing as if I was doing 5 and 1 third. So that would be 15 plus 1. Of course, that would be 16 thirds. All right, so I'm really kind of uh, challenging your uh, basic math skills. And some of you are like, wow, you know, maybe you forgot more about fractions and division that you thought. By the way, just a quick um, a suggestion for those of you out there that are like, you know, feel like you want to review basic math and relearn uh, these uh, skills that you forgot, check out two of my courses. Uh, one is my Math Foundations course. I'll leave a description to it in um, uh, the description box, or link to it, excuse me, in the description bo box. That's just a three-chapter mini course on all basic mathematics. Now, if you want to go ahead and go beyond that and get into algebra as well, check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. That has basic math, arithmetic, everything that we're doing here, plus algebra, geometry, and, and a ton uh, more stuff. Of course, I have massive amounts of videos on my YouTube channel as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and now figure out what x is equal to, being that we understand, or hopefully understand, uh, what I have done up to this point. All right, now, we're going to have to really pay attention here. Let's take a look at our denominators. This is 2x. This is an x. Okay, so we have one fraction equal to another fraction. Now, this is a proportion, uh, but, you know, some of you might be, well, can I just use a cross product? You can, but we can actually make our life a lot easier here. So if uh, we have two equal fractions and the denominator here is as 2x and this denominator is x, what if I just kind of multiply this thing by 1, okay? Now, what am I talking about 1? Well, that 1 is going to be 2 divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 is, in fact, 1. So I'm not really changing the problem, but I am rewriting the denominator so the denominators match. So if this is 2x and this is x, how about I just make this a 2x? And I could do that if I multiply the numerator by 2 as well. Okay, so this is really going to help us out make this problem a lot easier. So we're going to go ahead and match the denominators. So this is going to, uh, this is 2x, this is x, but we're going to turn it into a 2x by multiplying both the numerator and uh, the numerator and denominator by 2. Now, uh, you've got to be super careful here. Anytime you have a sum or difference in algebra, make sure you put parentheses around it or you will forget to use the distributive property. All right, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So this is going to be 2 times 5x plus 1. 
And what we're going to be doing is the following. So two times two X, that's gonna be two X right here. So the denominators are the same. So really, if I could just equate the numerators, I can solve for X. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So two times five X plus one is what? Well, this is going to be two times five X, which is 10 X uh, plus two times one is two. So 17 is equal to 10 X plus two. So now let's go ahead and solve for X. So we'll go ahead and subtract both sides of the equation by 10, oops, not both sides of the equation by 10x. I'm gonna subtract this two, excuse me, on both sides of the equation. So now I have 15 is equal to 10x. And to solve for x, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 10. So x will be equal to 15 over 10, and I could reduce this fraction, and x is equal to 3 halves. Okay, so that is the answer. Now, of course, this uh, using this approach is much more challenging but these type of problems, uh, working with the division algorithms and using a lot of algebra, this is all over advanced math. Okay, So if you don't understand basic arithmetic, you will have a tough time in algebra and even advanced algebra. Matter of fact, in my pre-calculus course, and if you're interested, if you're interested in that course, you can find a link to it um, in uh, the description box. But uh, one of the most challenging topics uh, in pre-calculus for most students, from my experience of teaching it for many years, is a uh, topic called partial fractions. And uh, that is really quite challenging. And if you don't understand uh, arithmetic, fractions, basic fractions, you know, these topics just continue to kind of follow you into algebra and advanced algebra, even into calculus. So what's kind of the uh, main point here? Well, the main point is this. If you truly want to learn math, you, there is no shortcuts. You have to build a strong foundation and just keep building your skill sets up one step at a time. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.